Hi, I'm Nancy O'Neill and welcome to Suncoast FYI. Today we learn about a campaign against summer hunger, some new programs involving our furry friends, a 5K raising awareness for mental health, plus a special visit from an author and cult survivor sharing her inspirational story on the Suncoast. Thousands of kids on the Sun Coast depend on school meal programs for food, but what happens when the school year ends? All Faiths Food Bank is working to end summer hunger, and Chief Development Officer Denise Kotler is here to tell us more. Morning, Denise. Good morning. Morning. Thank you for being here and for what you do. My pleasure. Um, now, the campaign has been going on for a number of years, but please review with our viewers uh, what the Campaign Against Hunger actually is and what it does for our community. This is the sixth year for the Campaign Against Summer Hunger mm -hmm. and it is our community's strongest line of defense to end summer hunger. When the school year ends, hunger begins for thousands of children in our community. It said 40,000 children? For, you are correct, 40,000. So in Sarasota County, Aye. almost 50 percent of the children in our schools depend on free and reduced lunch during the school year. Mm -hmm. In DeSoto County, who we serve as well, it's 100%. Oh my gosh. So, that equates to about 40,000 children when you add their siblings to mm -hmm. the count. Mm -hmm. 40,000 children could be at risk for summer hunger this summer. So the Campaign Against Summer Hunger raises the resources so we can feed those children over the summer. Okay, and how long does the campaign run for? I know it started. The campaign started April 1st. Okay. It runs through May 15th. Okay. There is a $700,000, $700,000 challenge match out there right now. Mm -hmm. So for every gift we get up until May 15th, it will be doubled up to $700,000. That's, That's amazing. Now, where does all of the food, do you just raise fund, do you raise food? Do people bring both? We raise funds and food. Um, honestly, the funds are uh, more efficient for us. Our buying power allows us to buy the food that really helps feed the children okay. in the summer. Okay. So that's that's more what you're looking for. Exactly. Now, I know you kicked off the campaign in a, in a new way this year. Can you tell us about oh, that? Oh, it was very exciting. Yeah. It was really exciting. We and Traditionally, we had a breakfast and kicked it off, mm -hmm. which was absolutely fun as well. This year we wanted to do something different. We wanted to really create that awareness in our community mm -hmm. and make some new friends for the food bank as well. So we had a walk over Ringling Bridge. Oh. It was a walk to end summer hunger. Mm -hmm. We actually had to cut it off at 400 participants. Oh my goodness. We never imagined we'd get such a response. And next year, we'll just grow bigger. It was wonderful. It was March 31st, and all you saw were a sea of t-shirts going over the bridge that said, hunger ends here, and it absolutely will. Wow. Now you were saying the, um, the, the, the campaign helps children in our community. How exactly is that implemented in the summer? So we work with over 200 partners across the county to feed children this summer, during the summer. We work most a lot of with um, food and nutrition services with Sarasota County Schools and DeSoto County Schools. We help enhance their programs with hot meals, breakfast and lunch, and then we also provide dinners once a week. We give out backpacks wherever there are children, there is a bag of food waiting for them. Yeah. Libraries are a huge partner for us in the summer. The children go for literacy classes, we give them food. Now are they coming food for food and they get reading? Either way, it's a win-win. It's, win -win. it's wonderful. That's why I was wondering how you reach the children in the summertime. And, and you said they're siblings as well. They're siblings. We work with early childhood learning centers, boys and girls clubs, YMCAs, etc. Our staff throughout the year build relationships with any place that will have children over the summer, and that's where we focus. Okay. We also have our regular mobile pantry programs out. We do nutrition classes over the summer. and. We just expand those efforts for the summer. Wonderful. Now, how can our viewers get involved? There's several ways to get involved. Obviously, a gift. A gift before May 15th, again, will get matched up to $700,000. Tell friends, tell five friends what you heard today and have them tell five friends. Create awareness of the issue in our community. Yeah. Volunteer. Go and volunteer 
Our programs are run by staff and volunteers, plenty of volunteer opportunities, and you can also do food or fund drives in your communities or in your businesses. Everything can be found at allfaithsfoodbank.org. Awesome. Awesome. Now, the volunteers, how many hours do they have to put in? Because, you know, people will say, I would love to volunteer, but I don't have a lot of time. Everything's online. You can volunteer for one mobile pantry the whole summer. You can volunteer every day. Okay. It's all your choice. Awesome. Great. Thank you so much for all this Thank information. Thank you. Pleasure having you. Thank you. Just ahead on Suncoast FYI, we learn about an interactive summer camp for kids who love animals. We're familiar with the Humane Society of Sarasota County's incredible animal clinic and adoption programs. However, they have several other educational programs benefiting our furry friends. And here to explain is Community Outreach Coordinator Jenny Armington and Scooby. Scooby. Oh, he's being so good. He is knows he? you. He knows you have treats for him in a bit. So, so tell us about what other programs uh, you offer at the Humane Society. We do a lot of humane education. Um, that's where I go out into the community. Mm -hmm. um, basically, I go to different schools, and sometimes we have the students come to the shelter, and I teach them about responsible pet ownership and animal safety. Uh -huh. um, I primarily teach them um, to be compassionate and kind towards all animals and when I go out into the schools I take our pet therapy um, dogs with us. Uh, we give them a tour of the shelter. Uh -huh. We recently started a brand new program. It's called Collars and Scholars and this is where we go in and we work with um, we work with the students where we're actually teaching them social and emotional learning. Um, we use animals and we compare animals to, um, to the students and how they can use some of these skills in their own lives. Mm -hmm. um, mostly I teach empathy, we teach them about feelings, we teach them about diversity. Um, we also have a very large pet therapy program. Yeah. yeah, and what better way than with a little cutie like this? I know he's missing his mom right now. But he he's, is. I know, Scooby. Oh, ha, ha, there's the tree. There's the tree. Now he'll be, he'll be calmer. <laughs> he's very he's new good. at this. This he's is his great. debut. <laughs> he's beautiful. He's so beautiful. It's his debut. <laughs> so you offer um, summer programs, though, as well, right? Yes, we do. Um, we have a summer camp. Uh, it starts on uh, June the 12th. And basically, I bring in all types of animals so that the kids that come can learn about all different types of animals. Like what? Um, well, I bring in horses. Really? Miniature horses, oh. miniature pigs, uh -huh. bunnies, reptiles, um, any, and I've had baby goats come oh in, um, any animal that I can basically you, get my hands on. There you go. I love to have wildlife rescue groups come in uh, and teach the teach the kids about wildlife. And so when do the summer programs start? They start June um it starts on June the tenth and okay. it runs through August the second. Okay. All right. He's a he's a little puppy, right? He is got, only three months yeah, old. He's got he's, a lot of energy. Yes, he is one of our dogs oh. um, who was adopted by our director of marketing and this Who little already has three dogs yes she does and other animals <laughs> she does <laughs> um, and he is a pet therapy dog in training Aww. so we're trying to socialize him so eventually he becomes one of our pet therapy dogs I love it I can see why you adopted him he's so cute he's so cute now how did you get involved Jenny with the, the Humane Society with the Humane Society yeah. My passion is animals. Uh -huh. um, it sounds like it. Yes. Yeah, all animals. Yes. Yeah. My passion is um, animals, and I really want to make a difference. And okay. that's how I started at the Humane Society, and okay. I've grown from there. And um, just re in the last couple of years, started working with humane education okay. and uh, pet therapy. All right. Now, you have some events coming up. We want to tell our viewers what those are. Sure. We're all over town. Um, we have a mobile adoption center, 
and I take out dogs and cats uh, to be adopted and you'll see us at a lot of the arts festivals. We go to Philippi Farmhouse Market. Okay. Uh, some of the events that we have coming up in May, we will be at the Venice Seafood Festival. We'll be at the Sarasota Veg Festival. Uh, okay. St. Armand Circle Seafood okay. and Music Festival. All right. Now, before we go, there's um, you, there's something about other people can host their own events. Absolutely. How does that work? Yes. If someone wants to have an event for us, mm -hmm. we would absolutely love it. Um, some some of the people that have events for us, they may give us a portion of their proceeds, or they'll do a food supply drive for us, and. Um, you know, all they have to do is get in touch with our director of marketing. We'd love to have as many people have events for us as possible. Okay, and that's all on your website, which we'll put across the yes, screen. Yes, it for is. Our yes, it is. Great. Well, thank you for being here, and thank you for bringing. You are very this welcome. Guy. He's so cute. All right. Thanks, Jenny. Thank you. Next on Suncoast FYI, we learn about a race on a mission for mental health. Millions of Americans are affected by mental illness every year, and running to change minds is breaking barriers and stigmas in a unique way. And here to tell us more is President Julie Nebaker. This is a serious problem, and um, you have created this event, and please tell our viewers about it and why. Um, so I'm an avid runner, 20 plus years, um, and I've had um, you know, whether personal, family, or coworkers, friends, um, mental health has come across my plate many, many times. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the ways that I kind of work through that is running. And so I've been fortunate to have a lot of support, and mm -hmm. I felt like those two things needed to marry up. And so um, we created a race. It's a 5K walk run. Um, uh, to benefit mental health awareness. Sure. So now, well, there's a lot of races out there, and that was one of the things that that you would mention. But this is the first race in Tampa Bay area. It is. I yeah, I was kind of surprised actually, um, because it's you know it's on the news. I mean, if you talk to someone about it, you someone says, oh yeah, I know someone, or yeah, yeah that's happened yeah. to me. Yep. Um, so I think it's going to be a standout race, mm -hmm. um, and really, you know, it's not as much about you know, having a participants, of course we want, but we really want to create a safe place where people can come out and, um, you know, run, talk about w how wellness um, is a part of that, and just celebrate life. It is, I mean, it, it's just, um, it, it frees your mind up, I think, when you're running, right? And you don't focus so much on other issues. Right. So it gives you a break, it gives you a break from what you might not want to be dealing with it at that moment, but. Um, this is something that you're doing not for a nonprofit organization. How, how does that work differently? Yeah, so it is for a nonprofit. Um, it's NAMI, which is the National oh, okay. Alliance for Mental Illness. Okay. Um, it's the Pinellas chapter. And they're, if you read about them, you just, there's so many great things that they do. Mm -hmm. um, one of the most important things is they provide support group services um, and education for people that maybe can't afford all of their mental health therapy. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, not more importantly, but as important is that they have support groups for families. So if you have a family member that has mental illness, you know, there's no script for that. Right. And that is um, where they can come and help educate you um, and be an advocate on your behalf to mm -hmm. help support the, the, the person that is struggling and you sure. as a, a family member. Sure, because a lot of times you don't know what to say or how to help somebody that you love and, and want to help and support. Right. right, right. So what can runners and walkers expect that day? Well, fun, because I'm, I'm all about the fun, and, and <laughs> you know, that's the most important. Yeah. Um, it's a, a 5K run walk. Um, it's very scenic. Um, you'll see a lot of waterfront views of Mobley Bay. And where's um, it starting? It starts in um, Oldsmar, Florida, okay. um, and um, at City Hall. And so we, there'll be water throughout the course. Um, um, we'll have live music. Um, lots of food afterwards. Um, we'll have a post-race party um, across the street at, at a local restaurant, and there'll be a band there, and we're really just gonna celebrate our accomplishments. Awesome, now I don't think we've mentioned the date. Oh, right? yeah, that's probably pretty important. That's, that's, yeah. yeah, so the date is May 11th, um, and we purposely picked um, May because that is Mental Health Awareness Month. 
Um, so mm -hmm. it just makes sense that those should go hand in hand. Okay, and um, it starts at what time? It starts at 8 a.m. I recommend that runner, runners and walkers get there at 7, 7.30. To get signed up. Yep, and yep. Uh, we'll have a little bit of um, munchies ahead of time, so a little maybe banana bread and whatnot, so okay. get you all fueled up so that you can run. There you go. Now, if people want to get involved, whether they're running or walking, can they volunteer? What other ways are there to get involved? Yeah, so definitely we're looking for people to come out on May 11th. Um, but for those that can't come, we actually have a virtual race option. Um, so as we have gained um, awareness throughout the nation, actually, um, people have said, well, I can't come to Tampa to run. Um, and I, so w what we did is we opened up a virtual race option. So I have a large group in Denver that will run on the same day. That's so and cool. And they're gathering some in Wisconsin and some in New York. That's so cool. Um, so yeah, so it should be pretty exciting. Right. Is there a website or anything? Where there is a website. Go to find Thank out? you for okay. reminding me. Um, yes, runningtochangeminds.com um, is our website. If you want to donate um, or register or sponsor, that is where you would go to get the information. Okay, great. We'll have a wonderful time. Great. Thanks for having me. Uh, my pleasure. Coming up next, a special visit from a cult survivor sharing her incredible story. next guest graduated magna cum laude with a double degree and started five different companies. She worked as a surf model, professional tango dancer, and traveled to nearly 50 countries before age 35. She was looking for something more when she was unknowingly drawn into a cult that took over her life for nearly seven years. Renee Linnell shares her incredible story in her new book, The Burn Zone, and is here now with more. I have been so looking forward to meeting you. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, looking at you, uh, my first question is, how does someone like you become brainwashed and end up in a cult? That is the million dollar question. Um, and the answer is slowly and after the perfect storm of events. Most of my family died when I was young, so I was seeking and searching from a young age. Why are we here? What comes after we die? And I had been raised Catholic by an alcoholic and abusive mother, so oh immediate, immediately I wasn't really, um, the Catholic church didn't work for sure. me. And so I was searching and traveling the world looking, and then I walked into a meditation seminar when I was 33 years old, and that's how the book opens, with me meditating for the first time and finding peace, and so I stuck around. It was, yes, peaceful and relaxing, and you felt part of something more. So this group built itself as an empowerment group, right? Yes. To yes. help you become the best person you can be then you realized it was a cult, right? and then what happened from there? There were some red flags that, that you found that you want to share with us, right? Yes, yes, they, she, the teacher was a woman, mm -hmm. which made me feel safe. And she said, in the East, people have these really strong spiritual practices, but they live in poverty. And in the West, people have these great careers, but they're spiritually soul sick. And so what she taught was sharpen your mind through meditation and then use your career as your spiritual practice and bring the best of yourself to every moment of your career, get promoted, make more money, create a life where you can meditate better and give back to the world through philanthropy. Doesn't that sound that sounded like, great. right? And like any toxic relationship, it was great in the beginning. I mean, mm -hmm. if you go on a first date and somebody hits you, you don't go on a second date. Exactly. But they romance you. So there was about a year and a half of romance and build up and giving me these amazing tasks like get a black belt in karate and become a computer programmer and learn to meditate. Um, and then my life became more and more consumed with the group. And then they start introducing self-doubt. And so red flags are any group that's easy to get into and hard to leave, where they shame you and ostracize you if you want to leave. Um, a group where they start increasing tuition and it becomes more and more expensive to stay. Another red flag is where the peace that you find depends on the leader, that they don't teach you how to find it at home alone, and they attribute it to the leader. Um, and another red flag is shame. When you start to feel bad, mm -hmm. it's time to go. Mm -hmm. So you felt yes. those, yes. right? Yes. Um, the book, though, the, the title of it, The Burn Zone. Yes. <laughs> yes. What, what is The Burn Zone, Renee? 
I had originally named it I Drank the Kool-Aid, The Long Journey Back to Myself, and my publisher picked this name and I love it. Um, it starts off with when I sat in the very front row of the meditation seminar and I had this incredible experience of my mind going blank and white and filled with peace, and I was scared by that, even though I was drawn in. And she said... Because she was so charismatic. She was so charismatic and because there was so much peace when I meditated. And so I asked what happened to me, and she said, you're sitting in the burn zone. You may want to move back a few rows, wow. meaning the light coming off of her was so powerful. Wow. But I realized as I went through the whole dismantling of my sense of self, burning everything I own, getting everyone that I loved out of my life, my friends and family. Did they make you do that? Or? Yes. Yes, wow. they remove your support structure. Um, I realized as I went through the melting down of who I was that when I came out the other side, finally, I came out stronger and wiser, um, kinder, so, more compassionate. So you did glean some goodness from this terrible experience. I did. I did. It took years. It took six years to heal. Um, but I realized that's the burn zone, too, mm -hmm. when life comes along and shatters us and we come out the other side better um, if we stick in there, mm -hmm. we stay in there. Yeah, what doesn't kill you makes you strong. Right. Okay. Right. Well, what, what kind of person are you today and how different a woman are you today than, than when you were in the cult? I have to say I like who I am better now. Um, you're, you're pretty awesome <laughs> thank lady. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I think I had so much PTSD and what I realized with PTSD is it's wishing what happened never happened. And I was wishing I was who I was before it happened. Um, I used to be very outgoing. Um, I always had to be the center of attention. I was a model and a professional dancer. Um, but I was self-righteous and judgmental and selfish and a little spoiled. And um, after going through everything I went through, I realized I just want to be kind. I mm -hmm. just want to be kind and I want to be grateful. And I thought I had to destroy everything human about me to become enlightened. And now I realize I can act enlightened every moment of every day by getting in my car 15 minutes earlier so I'm not a jerk in traffic, or leaving a larger tip, or opening a door for somebody struggling with packages. Um, and, and it so, does, it makes you feel good when you do that. There's yes. There's little things, yes. so little they seem, but give you such peace and gratitude. I know? think we love to be of service and I think that we were born to love and when we're loving and kind we feel the best about ourselves mm -hmm. and when we feel good about ourselves we're kind to others. Mm -hmm. So I got melted down and came out the other side a better version. That's great. There was one thing that I read that you had said that I really like because I think all of us can relate to this that um, when you're feeling um, angry or mad or frustrated that you you try to stay home if you possibly can so you don't share that with anybody else that you know you don't want to put those energy uh, that energy on anybody else and I thought that was great because Thank you. what a wonderful thing to try to do it's like yeah why should you give that to somebody else so. well and I also think in spiritual communities we're told we're supposed to be love and light all the time mm -hmm. and that's not the human experience mm -hmm. for as much love as we feel and as much light we also feel anger and fear and despair sure. and so I think we have to acknowledge that we have those feelings mm -hmm. but I try my hardest when I'm in those moods to not spew them all over others yeah, and to stay home that's great <laughs> I can okay. now the most wonderful thing is you're going to be in Sarasota on April 24th yes. signing your books. Yes. Tell, us, tell us where and, and the times, please, Renee. Okay, I'll be at Elysian Fields at noon on April 24th and Barnes & Noble on Tamiami Trail um, at 7 p.m. that evening. Yes. Okay, so people will be able to meet with yes. you, questions and answers about the burn zone? Yes. And they can get it online now or go to Barnes & Noble or Legion They can Fields go to those to two stores. Up. They'll have them. And it would be great to pre-order them and pick them up that night yeah. or get them now and I'd so, be happy to sign yes, them. Yes, get them now so you can read them. Yes. Because it's a fascinating book. And it's now available on Audible, narrated by a New York actress um, for those that don't like to read. Okay. I love it. Yes. I love it. Great. And of course, Amazon and BarnesandNoble.com. Okay. Well, it's a pleasure meeting you and I look forward to seeing you at your book signing. Thank you so much. Thanks for being so here. So nice to meet you. 
coming up this weekend is the 23rd annual Big Truck Day Extravaganza. Easter egg hunts, photos with the Easter Bunny, and a variety of trucks for kids to play in. Admission is free this Saturday at Nathan Benderson Park. Plus this Saturday is World Circus Day. Come celebrate at the Ringling Circus Museum featuring world's largest miniature circus, costume, and local circus history. Enjoy free admission all day. If you would like to promote your community event on Suncoast FYI, we would love to hear from you, and this is a complimentary service. Please call our producer, Andrea Chu, at 941-361-4651. To view previous episodes, go to snntv.com. I'm Nancy O'Neill, and we'll see you next Friday on Suncoast FYI.